What's up? This is a DJ and one, and today I'm gonna show you how to get ready for any DJ set using Record Box. Now, a lot of times people will do the whole, oh, well, you're not on a laptop, so you can't DJ, where it used to be like, oh, you're not on vinyl, so you can't DJ. That's not true at all. There's a ton of great DJs out there that use Record Box and all they do is just use USBs. And let's be honest, I was definitely one of those people at the start who was like, only using my laptop, that would be it. <laughs> I would never think about going to USBs or anything like that. But I think it's important for everyone to know how to use each software as a DJ. So hypothetically speaking, let's say you're going on an out of town gig, right? You're going to the venue, you show up to the venue, everything seems great, the opener is playing on USBs, and you go up there and you're ready to switch over, right? And the actual mixer itself, the port that's supposed to be for laptops and like the connection of laptop to mixer isn't working. What are you gonna do? Now granted, that's not your fault that the venue doesn't take good care of their equipment or something like that and it's all messed up. But it would be nice to have that level of versatility. So even if you are on Serato, I still think this video applies to you because you can easily just slap a USB on your keychain and be ready at all times to DJ and do a set. So I'm just gonna go through Record Box here and basically set it up how I usually set up my Record Box here. So you guys can just see how I have everything set up in advance so that when I go to actually DJ on Record Box, I can DJ really quick because I've already done a lot of the planning on the front end. So it's kind of like Batman, you know, like with enough prep time, like I can crush anything. So when you first hop into Record Box, you'll get a screen up like this. I already have this because this was an analyzed track. But the first thing that I would do, I mean, this is a brand new session of record box so i would go through and adjust all of my columns like people do in serato or tractor typically so if you right click on any of these like tabs or sections here you get the same pop-up that you usually get so there is no need for me to have artwork that's not something i use um i don't have the ratings up there it's not something that i use the time of the track is not something I have up there typically. Other than that, that's pretty much it. You can then shift them around however you want. I mean, there's a ton of like options as well. I mean, bitrate too is something I look at. So like, for example, this is a 192. I wouldn't use this. Um, I pretty much stick to only 320s at this point. So sometimes I'll have bitrate, but in this case, I won't. And then up here, you have a performance mode, a lighting mode, an edit mode, and an export mode. Okay, so the mode that I always use is export because I'm exporting onto USB. So my layout typically looks something like this on my laptop. So it'll have the track here, like your standard visualize of the audio file, and then it has everything else. So your BPM key, all that jazz. So once you have all of their columns laid out the way you want, and then when you have it turned on to export, what you wanna do then is you want to change your waveform color. So in Record Box, the default color you get is like a whitish blue. And what I like to do is I like to change it to the RGB mode because it's very similar to the visual layout of Serato and Tractor, where you have in Serato, you have your kicks, 808, space lines in red, your mids are kind of in green, like your vocals, and your high mids and your highs are in blue. So if you just click on this three bar box here, you can just change your waveform color to RGB or three band if that's what you prefer. And then you'll actually have when you export now, if your mixer has the RGB function and can like work with that, you'll actually have the colored waveforms then that way. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna set the grid of the track itself. I personally don't do this that much. I am guilty of this. I really should be doing this more, but uh, no one's perfect, okay? Right. So to set the grid, this is actually already set right here, but I'll make it off and then I'll reset it properly for you guys. So I'm just gonna play it here. So nice on grid, you can see the lines here and how they're vertically down on like the kick, the clap, basically on the one of everything, which is really good. If you go to this grid section here on the left, 
You're gonna hear this bad scratch sound, sorry. Let's say when you got it, it read it wrong and it looked like this, okay? All you have to do is just line it up on like a, a kick, right? Or where you know the one is gonna be and just click this white and reddish line and then it'll set your grid. Like it'll snap it to the grid right there and then you have a perfect visual representation when you're mixing and you're exporting USB, the grid will pop up like this every time on the CDJs or whatever mixer you're using. And then once you have your first one, you kind of just go down the line, make sure all of the grids are just perfectly in line. It typically does a great job with this, but it's good to double check if you like using grids when you're mixing. Next thing we're gonna talk about is setting cue points. It's actually pretty easy to do in Rekordbox. So it was right above the grid here. So if you just go up to Q slash loop, you can set all of your cue points right here, all eight if you wanna have eight. I usually have like three or four. Um, so right there. And the reason why I really like Rekordbox is when you hit your Q button, you don't have to hit Q and then play. It auto plays it when you hit the Q button. So if I hit A, it starts the track when I hit the Q from that section, which I really like personally, because then you can use your actual Q button on the mixer if you want to, to kind of like spam it, if you want to like tap it in, but you can use the Q pads to then actually start your track on that Q. And if you want to get really precise with your cues or with your grids, you can use these little magnifying glass features right here. If it's tucked away, you just hit this arrow and then you can actually use the zoom in to get very finite, um, really precise with what you're doing. So the next thing I wanna talk about is actually looping in Rekordbox. Rekordbox has some great looping features to it. This is personally my favorite feature. You can set loops in Rekordbox and set them to be active loops. So when you're DJing, you don't even have to think about setting a loop on the CDJ with the two button feature that is typically there. You can just wait for it to hit that point once it's an active loop and it'll just auto loop it for you. So it kind of looks like this. So let's say I just want to set a four bar loop here and it'll sound like this. So you just have the hi-hat section kind of going. If you hit memory, you'll see it display this memory cue loop here. And if I click it again, I can set it to an active loop. And that's what I'm talking about. So what that means is, like I said, when it hits that section in the song, it'll start to auto loop it for you. So if you have like three of these, right, towards like the end of a track, it's really nice because you don't even have to think about setting the loop. You just know that like, all right, this section's going to auto loop and it'll display it too. It'll have like a red arrow. You see the red arrow right above the A right there that first cue point, it'll then, that's basically your indicator saying, hey, at this point, at this big red arrow, this is when your active loop is gonna start for this section. A lot of my tracks, especially if it's like house tunes or something like that, I have like a lot of auto loops set up so that when they get to those instrumental breakdowns and stuff like that, I could just auto loop it. And then I know that at that point, that's when I'm gonna start my transition. So the last tip I have when it comes to putting together your record box for the first time is actually utilizing the traffic light feature. The traffic light feature is something that's been new to record box and it's something that I haven't really utilized because I'm not someone who harmonically mixes that much, but it is something that I'm starting to do more of and it sounds a lot better because of it. <laughs> that's for sure. So what it is, is it basically highlights quality candidates for a harmonic mix based off of the key of your song. So it's right here, it's this little master button. If you click this master button, since this track right here is an E minor, it basically will then in green highlight all of the tracks that are good candidates for like a harmonic mix would be the way to describe it. So you have your C, A minor, E minor, which is obviously right in key, it's a perfect match. So it shows you pretty much all closely relative or exact matches in terms of key. So if you're someone who's into harmonic mixing and you're putting together your sets, I definitely encourage that you enable this feature and put together sets that way. It's so easy. It's a freaking cheat code. It's fantastic, actually. So now that you have everything put together, you have your loop set, your cues, all that jazz, what you want to do next is you want to export your USB. So you would plug your USB into whatever USB slot it is in your laptop or your PC, whenever you're using. And then you would right click on the playlist or the crate that you have. And then where it says export playlist, you'll be able to export to any USB pretty much that you have plugged in at that point. So you would just export it onto your USB and then you're good to go. 
Yeah, baby, yeah! Alrighty, ladies and gents, that does it for me today. Hopefully you learned something new. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And then I plan on coming back with more of these videos, maybe a more advanced record box video, as well as some tractor. Probably going to get a guess for that one. Definitely need a good guess for that one. A uh, Serato one as well, just so that there's always a resource for people to go back to. So if you're meeting someone who's like a new DJ or something like that, you can just point them to here and be like, all right, just go to this like YouTube page, look at these videos and you don't have to explain it all to them. They'll actually be able to watch like a five, 10 minute video and then be on their way. But until the next video, take it easy and I'll talk to you soon.